the future, shall we say, are uh, question marks, things we don't know already. Right. So I think uh, what I set out to do was something we didn't know and we didn't understand and we didn't know what value or use it was. And so the light pavilion became a kind of uh, experimental space where it's created without a particular program except for light, this enduring universal uh, phenomenon that is part of our uh, experience, part of our idea of architecture, certainly. The possibility of a transforming experience, which is, which is really not a thing. It's, it's a lot more than a thing. Mm -hmm. It's a space that transforms, whether it's, you know, I mean, it's like a piece of music. It surrounds you. You know, it becomes something that you, you inhabit, you go through, you, 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 you're embraced by it. It isn't just something you're looking at. I mean, for me, it, it doesn't have to be a thing. So I'm thinking about the practice of architecture. How can the practice of architecture be expanded? How can it be enriched? How can new things come out when we're not just looking at history books and we're not just thinking about uh, what's in the newspaper. How do we architects work? But otherwise, your, your entire world is in a kind of anti-gravity. In a way, Lebius succeeded. He always made those drawings by, by his incredible hand that had no gravity, had the sense of anti-gravity. And finally, when he builds one thing, he does it in space and in, in real experience. So it's really an amazing feat that this project was realized.